Well, morning folks. This video is just for members, so it's not tailored and beautiful. But I thought it's probably the easiest way to communicate, and I'm a little bit groggy because I had a very late night last night doing some analysis, and um, I'm a little tired. But let's just quickly spend five minutes looking at the charts, and I'll tell you what I'm thinking. So here we've got the euro. Let's start with the majors. Uh, I'm not 100% convinced we're going up on the euro anymore. If you'd seen my previous videos, you would have noticed that I thought we might get up to 1.1 on the euro. But I've spotted this pattern, which is a... Uh, I don't know, it's a megaphone or a foghorn or a bugle, depends what you want to call it. It's an expanding pattern. And uh, overall, I'm still bearish on the euro. And it's quite possible that we've reached um, the top of this pattern where we have, um, that we might not get any further despite breaking through previous highs. Uh, the reason I think this is because if you look at the stock market, the uh, stock indices, they're also showing weakness and no follow through from the rally after the NFP on Friday. So we've just taken a short on the euro and you can see why. Uh, my stops are above here. The uh, the, the, the signals on, on the telegram. And uh, so stops above this pattern. This is the hourly chart. And I'd like to see us heading back down towards the bottom of this pattern, of this uh, expanding pattern. And which takes us down to about 1.45 or 1.04 or 1.05 at the moment. So that's the kind of thinking on that. I don't want to get into the pound at the same time. So I'm going to leave that alone. This is the pound daily chart. You can see um, still looks pretty bullish. And if you compare the daily charts between the pound and the euro, the pound is the one that actually looks the most bullish. Here's the euro daily chart. You can see we're at the top of the pattern. Uh, but this pound generally looks at us a, a bit more bullish. We saw a, a bigger engulfing candle and off those two moving averages. So, And then I'm not going to talk about the Aussie and the New Zealand dollar. They'll probably pretty much follow suit. Um, the Euro CAD overall, um, someone was just asking me about CAD. Why is it CAD strengthening against the Euro? Uh, why do I think it'll strengthen? So we've just taken a short. We're at the 20-day moving average. Uh, it's a good support and resistance level. Uh, it needs a technical correction. We're overbought by a long way on this. Yeah, we could be forming a, a bull flag. It's quite possible, but it's worth having a little go there. And that's why we're short EuroCAD. Um, and the Canadian dollar reacts quite strongly to oil prices. We've seen oil prices um, uh, drop down through 2022. And I think they'll start to go back up again, which should, um, uh, well, we should see a, a kind of reversal in Euro CAD. Um, so CAD strength, perhaps down to, you know, 1.4, 1.35, something like that, with the prospect of higher oil prices and a technical correction. So that's the only reason I'm short there. Um, and nothing really on the rest. So let's have a look at the yen crosses now. I put something up on yen crosses. Bank of Japan probably will increase interest rates to around 0% sometime in the early part of this year. And uh, yen crosses are all overbought. Uh, Euro US dollar, uh, sorry, Euro yen, dollar yen, pound yen, Aussie yen. I think the Aussie yen looks the most attractive. I think these should all start to drift down over time. Um, as we face the prospect of a, a BOJ rate increase, um, we've seen inflation. I posted something up last night. Inflation on Japan continues to rise, so um, there'll be pressure on interest rates in Japan. And this is the, um, that's not the one I want to look at, the um, Australian dollar yen. Um, so overall, this one is, is pretty, pretty severely overbought. Um, overall, in the bigger picture, this is the daily chart. These are all daily charts. We've reached that 50%, 38% uh, FIB. We've reached the downward trend line. We've reached the 50 period moving average. All of that there poses quite strong resistance. So that's worth having a go. If we think the overall direction on these pairs is down, which I do, uh, because of uh, interest rate hikes in Japan, potential interest rate hikes and inflation. Um, and the same applies to all of these pairs, really. You pick your poison. Um, so we're going with um, 
Oh, we're going, sorry, I am a little groggy. Just ignore that. So we're going with um, Australia, Australian dollar yen and euro yen. You'll see those are two signals that was put up in the in the uh, telegram. Now, uh, gold, you know, over, sim simply a technical correction. I think we're overextended. I'm bullish on gold, so I think I'd like to see gold drop down a bit, down to one thousand eight hundred, maybe one thousand seven hundred and fifty. Overextended, um, and we're due for a correction in metals in general. Really, I think we we should see a pullback to accumulate and consolidate and spend some time ranging around the 1750 to 1800 level that's what i think might happen so we've got some space to drop back down i wouldn't be buying at this level it's too high um but I, i'm willing to try a short and then i'll be looking to buy gold for most of the first part of this year and maybe into the latter part of the year uh, we see the same pattern on the dollar index that's over here as we just saw on the on the euro um this uh, megaphone, foghorn, bugle pattern. And uh, there is a trend line, this this line that we've fallen down onto and not really sort of made any progress through it. This is a four-hour chart on the dollar index. Let's have a look at the hour chart, uh, daily chart, if we can get it. So there's that pattern. We've got this long-term trend line coming up. Generally, I think we could get down to 100 on the dollar index, 101 to 100 where this Fibonacci is, 50% and support level. And this trend line will then have been broken. So once if we do sort of hold beneath this trend line, we should be able to get a little bit further downwards. But we've got this pattern, which is a pretty reliable pattern. And um, we've often seen it on stock indices and other pairs and currencies and uh, commodities and uh, it's a reversal pattern this foghorn bugle megaphone whatever you want to call it it's a reversal pattern so it's possible that the dollar index might hold up here so that's what we're punting on at the moment taking a little little gamble on that um, of course it may just carry on falling through but we're not seeing a lot of momentum continuation um, with the rest of things um, so I'm not just going to talk about those right now and then stock indices, you can see what I'm talking about. Here's the NASDAQ S&P US 30. And after that surge on Friday after the NFP yesterday, the stock indices basically closed where they open. In fact, the S&P was a little lower than the open, and so was the US 30. That's the Dow Jones. And we saw the same thing happening in Amazon. Um, <clears throat> closed lower than the open, apart from the gap. Apple. Same thing, Tesla, and we've got ARC, and this ammonia stock, and but we're going to focus on these three here. Now, if you're going to be trading stock indices, I don't know. I think we might have another retest of that high, but let's just look at NASDAQ, the high meaning yesterday's high, um, just moving higher, uh, and then dropping back down again. And here's the 50-day moving average. That red line is obvious long term. When I say long term, I mean the last year or two uh, resistance. Um, to get up through there will be tough um, if the market's going to rally. We do have this triple bottom. Now, a lot of this stuff I've posted in my videos on YouTube and on Twitter. So if you want some more detailed information, go and have a look. But I think uh, stock indices are best left alone today and tomorrow until we get the Fed talking today, Jerome Powell's talking, then there's a whole bunch of Fed oaks. We call them oaks in South Africa, meaning uh, men. Uh, I think they're all men, the Fed people, I think. There might be a woman in there, a token woman. Um, I'm not sure, actually. That's an interesting question. But we might get the um, some interesting talk. I think... Um, Powell is speaking at Davos today at 8.30ish Eastern Time. So it'll be interesting. I think we're just going to hear hawkish stuff from, from the Fed officials who are talking. But the real news is on Thursday when we get jobs coming out, the, the weekly jobs, but we also get the CPI number. And the markets are probably going to do very little until then, um, particularly the stock indices. So... 
I think we'll see ranging between currently where we are, maybe a little lower, and maybe a little higher between this red line and this green line. I think that support and resistance, I think that's more or less where we'll be ranging until we get the CPI number. If the number's good, in other words, lower, we should see stocks rally quite significantly. If the number's uh, bad, obviously, if it's really bad, we're going to see stocks drop off. And if the number is kind of in the middle, um, well, it's anyone's anyone's ball game. So we'll see what happens. But that's Friday, uh, sorry, Thursday, 8.30 Eastern Time, CPI and jobs all at the same time. And that's going to be the key this week, I think. So I thought I'd just send this out. It's going to members only. No one else gets to see this. That's why it's a bit rough and ready. I'm a bit croaky because I've just woken up, but I just wanted to give you a feedback on the markets. Ciao.